Connective tissue differs from epithelium in that it is not entirely made up of cells. In fact, it is made up of cells plus secretions by the cell in the form of fibers and ground substance. Connective tissue plays a huge role in our body. It is the major transport system of our body and the, in the form of blood. It is our major support system in the form of bone and cartilage. It makes up some of the uh, main parts of our organs. It is for support and movement in tendons and ligaments. It is for structure in bone and cartilage. Uh, there is many, many different functions that we're going to see as we look at some of this different connective tissue. There are major classes of connective tissue. We have loose connective tissue, which is, which we're going to look at first, actually. That's irregular, reticular, and adipose tissue. Uh, dense connective tissue, cartilage, bone, and blood. We're going to look at most of these in depth. Bone and blood we will scratch the surface on because we have separate units dedicated to bone and dedicated to the cardiovascular system. Okay, the first type of connective tissue we're going to look at is irregular connective tissue, and this falls under the class of loose connective tissue. It is fairly loose arrangement of cells, fibers, and ground substance. Uh, what you see here is you see a lot of individual cells. These are called fibroblasts, and you see these individual cells not so densely packed together like you would see with epithelium. And then amidst those cells you see these thin fibers and these squiggly fibers and then kind of in the background you can see these thicker pink fibers. Regular connective tissue is unique because it contains all three connective tissue fiber types. These fibers have different uh, functions. The, the thicker fibers in the background that are kind of pinkish in color are called collagen fibers and collagen is the most abundant protein in our bodies and collagen provides for a lot of support and strength. It provides strength against stretching and, and, um, and tension. It also has these thin black fibers that you see here. Those are elastic fibers. Elastic fibers provide elasticity. Elasticity is different from flexibility in that flexibility is the ability to stretch. Elasticity is the ability to return to your original shape from that stretch without being damaged. And then the last fiber type are these little short squiggly ones and those are called reticular fibers and they're usually to form the shape and provide a supporting network of fibers. Irregular connective tissue is going to be found in the basement membrane or the lamina propria of, uh, of your body, so your tissues, your epithelial tissues are anchored to a regular CT in a lot of cases. <clears throat> but it, it is fairly abundant and it contains all three fiber types. Everything, everything that you see here that is not a cell, there's a cell, and not a fiber, is what's called ground substance. Ground substance is also secreted by the cells, just like the fibers are, and they fill in, it, ground substance fills in the spaces between the cells and the fibers. In a lot of cases, it's the ground substance that makes the connective tissue what it actually is. Sometimes it's a very flexible, um, jelly-like ground substance, and sometimes it's, it's a pretty hard mineral ground substance like you see in bone. So we're going to see different forms. The, cell, the fibers and the ground substance together are known as the matrix. The next type of connective tissue we're going to look at is reticular connective tissue. And you can see a couple of pictures here. We've got a micrograph here. We've got an illustration here. And I've got a picture I've taken in the lab right here. What you'll notice with reticular connective tissue is that there actually are a lot of cells. And a lot of these cells are leukocytes, which are white blood cells. So these are white blood cells in here. The reason why is because you find reticular connective tissue in lymph nodes and the spleen and other lymph organs that that functions to filter out your extracellular fluid and your lymph and return it to your bloodstream, which functions to filter out 
extracellular fluid and lymph uh, through those white blood cells. Now, those white blood cells are embedded in reticular fibers, which helps give the lymph organ, like the spleen or the tonsils or lymph nodes, its shape. So reticular connective tissue consists of reticular fibers and leukocytes. The next type of loose connective tissue is adipose tissue, and adipose tissue is fat. Another function of connective tissue is energy storage and protection and insulation uh, for heat. And adipose tissue does that. We can see a couple of pictures here. We have an illustration. We have a couple of pictures under the microscope. Adipose tissue is unique because it is a lot of cells. It's not a lot of ground substance in adipose tissue. It is a lot of cells, and these cells are very large. They have nucleus, but they also have a place called a vacuole that stores triglyceride. Adipose tissue is the way we store triglycerides. It's energy storage for our body. It's fat. The adipose cells have unlimited uh, capacity for fat storage. They'll get bigger and bigger and bigger, and when they can't get any bigger, they'll just make new, new adipose cells so that we can continue to store fat. And we find fat almost all over our bodies. This is adipose tissue. That's the last of the loose connective tissue. The dense connective tissue, there are two types of. We have dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue. What makes dense connective tissue dense is how closely packed the collagen fibers are. The collagen fibers are very densely packed here and they all run in the same direction as you'll notice. You'll notice that they're all running in the same direction. That's because these collagen fibers are there to resist tensile forces, which means forces that are going to pull in either direction on those fibers. So dense, the regular part of dense regular means that the fibers are all going in the same direction. So you would see this in tendons and ligaments in structures that need to resist forces basically in one direction. Like in this picture here, you see a gastrocnemius muscle, the Achilles tendon. The gastrocnemius is going to pull on the calcaneus superiorly. That tendon needs to resist those forces. And so the collagen fibers are all going in the same direction to resist those forces. That's dense regular connective tissue. Some parts of our body, like the dermis of our skin, which is the underlying layer of our skin, has to resist forces in all different directions. Sometimes our skin has to stretch, sometimes it has to resist being pulled on, sometimes it has to be resist being pushed on. So then you get densely packed collagen fibers in all different directions. For instance, you can see some of these fibers are traveling this way. Some of them are traveling up here. Some of them are going straight across. And some of them we're looking at cross sections of, they're actually coming right at you through the screen. So there's many different directions. That's why this is called irregular, dense irregular connective tissue. And this is in places where you see, where you mostly see forces having to be resisted in multiple directions.